a little loose. It's a little loose. Ooh, that one works. The problem with it not being controlled is you can slip. There's one. Just sizing this Marotak. Mr. Shinobi is here, 797. Blue Shirt Buddha is here. Almighty Ohm, Ben is here, Casper from Ghost Watches is here, going to attempt to size this titanium bracelet on this uh, Maritak because I decided to actually buy this watch from him, so I figured I might as well size it, looks like they put some Loctite on the screws too. And for once, hey Kevin, and for once I decided to use, normally I, I use these YS screwdrivers at 1.2, but that's too small of a blade for this here. So, at Craig's here, now oh, I can't send it back. Um, I probably could, but, which I guess technically I haven't paid for it yet, but I will. After this live stream, I'll send the PayPal for it. What is that? Hold on. Brandon Bishop says, auto challenge. Let it die. Put it on your wrist and see how long you can wear it before it starts ticking. I've done that before with a few watches. A lot of times I'll do that with the um, SKX. I'll just wear it around for a little while and wait for it to start uh, running and then set it. Well, Cowboy Swami's here too. Lazy Drifter's here. Oh yeah, Jordan, I did see that. Uh, Elshin from the owner of um, Zelos, I almost said Zelos. Zelos uh, announced a pretty crazy material, uh, 40 millimeter swordfish coming out. Let's see. Craig is asking, what's my current EDC knife? Um, I pretty much only carry one knife and it's all of the time and it's the uh, Swiss Army knife. I don't have it on me right now because I'm not really working. So usually when I have my work attire on, I pretty much carry a Swiss Army knife 58 millimeter mini champ. That is my go-to. I know it's not as cool as a lot of people do their EDC picks, but I carry what I carry. And that thing has never let me down. I use the pen in it. I use the scissors. I use the knife. I use the tweezers. I use all of those things. I just took one link out of each side. Dan asked, Rob or anyone else, are Laurier watches made in China or Hong Kong? I don't know exactly what or where they're made at. All right, so I did one out of each side. I think that's gonna work. Now I can just do the micro adjust. And I think there's some more plastic on here. It needs to come off. I hate the plastic on these watches. The protective coatings stuff, I can't stand that. Okay, so I just need to bring the micro adjust in a little bit. So I'll use my Bob Labs. I might go into that one. Gotta find the pin 
into that hole. No, I went too far. It's got to go back. There it goes. All right. Size in the watch, guys. Not reading the comments. Sorry. Okay. There it is. Sized up. And it's not centered. So I don't care. Actually, I do kind of care. That sticks up a little bit. So maybe I'll take two out of the side, put one back. Or no, take one. I don't know. Whatever. I don't care. This is going to go um, on a watch tour anyway. Then these little guys. I don't know what you guys do when you're sizing bracelets, but I always try to put the links back together. Just don't tighten this one. Either of them, really. You don't have to tighten too much. So I'll try to put the links together a little bit. Just a few threads. Just enough to so they're not bouncing around. And then I use... These little baggies go on Amazon or do you up some of the couple different size baggies so you can keep your spare links and pins in control. Okay, let's look at some comments here. Oops. Let's see. I'm going to send you a postcard from Connecticut, but it's really from St. Thomas. Oh, Jordan's going to send me a postcard. Get the tools back. Alrighty, somebody asked, um, oh, Sandbag 1300, what is the white dial watch to the right of the Omega? This is my Breitling Super Ocean 42 millimeter, which I think is the only way you can get the white dials in the 42 millimeter. I just finally recorded the actual video for this watch. I recorded it today earlier, so I'll post that up probably in the next couple of days. But there already is some videos with this on my channel, you know, the unboxing and everything. But, yeah, really digging this watch. To the point where, you know, I, I had been wearing this Oris Titanium Aquas, and uh, I'm still thinking about buying it. Uh, I'm, I'm going back and forth now. Hey, Jim, with the Super Chat, $5 hairs. Thank you very much, Jim. I appreciate that. Um... Yeah, I just really like this watch, and I could see buying one of these, so I, I'm not sure if I'm going to make that happen or not. Or if I, I, I might need to cool my jets. I know that sounds messed up, because I'm in a position where I could buy that, but I've bought so many watches recently that I feel like I need to probably just stop for a little bit. Shane dislikes the hands on the Oris. I could see that. Um, I mean, they are, like, super legible, and they're clean and everything like that, but there's not a whole lot of, like, character to them necessarily. Um, they're definitely their own thing, but I think, I don't know, I like them. They're super legible, and they're clean. I like them. Uh, let's see. How about some tequila? Nope, not tonight, Floridian. I am actually drinking water, aqua. Just plain water. I got to get up early and go to work tomorrow morning, so. Uh, let's see. Casper from Ghost Watches says, I'd love to see Oris do another LE limited edition diver 65, but with a new caliber. I still haven't, I'm not in the know. I know Bruce said that he had talked to the people over at Oris, and they told him that uh, a model that is going to be like one of the next release so, <laughs> uh, I, I'm not in the know. It's probably a good thing, too, because I would probably spill the beans. I'm not very good at holding those secrets. Nefarian says his internet's taking a dump. That's all right. I'll be around here. We just started. We're only like nine minutes in, so I'll be around here for a little bit. I'm sure you can get it working. Uh, let's see. Christopher Ward, blue marine version. What do you think? I don't know. I'd have to look into that one. Got a lot of watches in right now, guys. I'm trying to get the videos done. Actually, I've been doing pretty good with getting the videos out, but... Uh, Orange Monster front and center. I could. Uh, maybe not that one, though. Maybe I'll do this one. I'm going to put 
that one front and center. Uh, let's see, Johnny Juke is rocking the Range Man, the G-Shock Range Man. Shane says he would like to pick up a Christopher Ward next. That would be pretty good. Uh, let's see, Jade Monster, please. I don't have a Jade Monster. Craig is admiring this Christopher Ward. This is Craig's Christopher Ward. <laughs> so, yeah, and it is really sharp looking, I have to say. You know, I originally fell in love with the 42 millimeter white dial variant of this watch here, and it kind of prepped me for the Omega. You can see these side by side. So, like, say you don't have or you can't justify spending close to $5,000 for a Seamaster or $4,500, wherever you can get it for. Straight up, guys, I can tell you, like, just go ahead and jump over, spend the $1,000, get yourself a ward, and don't look back because they are killer watches. And they have a bunch of different color options, really. So you can get the white, you can get this black with the, this is almost like a burgundy, they call it black with red, but the bezel action on these is so good. You can actually grip the bezel. I can't grip the bezel on the Omega very good. This bezel is actually really nice. For the price point, it is extremely difficult to, um, to beat a Christopher Ward value. Yeah, and I know I kind of gripe about the import fees or duty fees or whatever you want to call it for it, but maybe don't think of it that way. Maybe think of it as whatever this is. I, I just talked about this not too long ago. I forget what these end up costing. Um, 11 or 1200 bucks, right? And then you're going to pay like another 120 or $150. Um, just call it a $1,300, $1,400 watch. Oh, uh, Mark, they just got you. Mark says his uh, watch was $801.50. And he said his import fees through DHL was $105. Ah, oh, man, that just really bites. But the reality is you paid 900 bucks for the watch. Just think of it that way. It's still a killer deal. Like, and it's just what we're faced with. It's what we have to, those are the rules that we operate under, so... Kind of just is what it is. But these are good. There's like no play in it. I mean, these are so well constructed. I mean, you're, anybody's only legitimate gripe could be that it's called Christopher Ward. Well, if you're mad about the Christopher Ward, then why are you looking at Christopher Ward? Look somewhere else. You know, if you're mad about um, where the Christopher Ward logo is, why are you looking at Christopher Ward? Go, go look at something else. Yeah, Christopher Ford usually has a coupon for 125 bucks, so just maybe take that coupon and count that as like your, you know that's going to basically cover your uh, duty fees. Yeah, let's see here. Yeah, I think the... Uh, I think the ward is definitely a good one. I think somebody asked me if the visitor is, is noisy or loud. Yeah. It's the Miyota 9015 in a smaller cased watch. You're going to hear it and feel it. It's it's audible. For sure. The only way you're going to um, mitigate that is if you put it in like a big chunky diver watch. Is the only time I've ever noticed the uh, calming of that, uh, that rotor wobble or spin or whatever. So... Uh, let's see. Vodejo says, Christopher Ward has a forever coupon for 10% off. Pretty sure it's mod 10, M-O-D 10. Hmm, maybe check that out. Maybe that, maybe that works. Uh, certified Desk Diver is asking, what's replacing the Black Bay 41 in your collection? So in case you don't know, I have sold this guy here. I actually need to ship this out. So uh, originally I was going to replace it with... Um, the Tudor Black Bay 41 Diver Smile Dial. And then that was kind of a bust that just didn't work out for the uh, Crown and Caliber purchase, which I should get a refund update on that. Yeah, I did sell this one right here, Scott. Um, so the update on me returning the Black Bay 41 Diver 
to Crown and Caliber. They did, did, did receive it, and they've told me that as soon as it's inspected from their return department or whatever, then they'll issue, issue me a refund. So should go smooth. I don't expect any problems on that. So as far as what am I going to do to replace it? Well, I had originally thought about buying this uh, titanium Oris Aquas. And then, yeah, um, is it Vudejo? Is that how you say your name? Uh, is asking about the uh, Tudor Pelagos. Um, well, I actually was looking at that today. I thought maybe that would be the way to go, but I just don't like how much text is on that bottom part. And I know that's nitpicky, but, and how thick it is. So, I mean, I could go with the earlier generation one, but again, I only like to buy new, brand new AD or direct from the manufacturer. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm still kind of, as a front runner, I'm still kind of thinking the Titanium Oris Aquas. I just absolutely love wearing this watch. I love the taper on the bracelet. I love the polished titanium. I even like how this one's like a, this was a loner and it was already like pre-scratched up and everything. I actually kind of like that it scratches up the way it does. So if I'm going to own a titanium diver, I would much rather own this versus the Pelagos. I kind of... And maybe I can reach out to Oris and maybe they can do it. I kind of would like to maybe see the 400, though. I want to see maybe if, they're, if they would make me one and sell it to me. Um, the titanium, this model here, but with the new 400 movement in it. Then I would, I would do it for sure if they would do that for me. But I don't know that they'll do it specially for me. Yeah, I just, this case, the Oris Aquas case is just so cool. Stefan is asking um, on the ferry and says, see if they can make you one too. I'll, you know what? I'll ask them. I'll email them. Maybe I can get a couple of them. Uh, Stefan is asking, do I like bronze? I do in certain cases, but typically when micro brands, especially when they do bronze, that's a cost saving thing. That's like a little test. So um, to see how well it's received. So bronze is easier to machine and it's cheaper material. So it's a, it's a cost savings thing. So typically I kind of don't like bronze. Kevin says they won't make you a titanium watch with the new movement. No way. Oh, I got to ask. I have to ask. I, I don't have a problem with the Salita movement, but if I could either get the 400, then I, I would do that for sure, or um, I don't know if they they probably can't source an ETA or if somebody can swap in an ETA or something. I, I don't think I want it like regular. I want something special. Tennessee Mike says I should pick up the Panerai. I was looking at the uh, 574 again, the guy that I was talking to and negotiating with. Um, I, I don't think so. I don't think that's the way I'm going to go because I kind of have a watch. Actually, I should have it tomorrow. Yeah, Nefarian. Or, yeah, if I could get a COSC, which actually I could just buy that, right? Even if they don't put the 400 in, I could buy that and I could just send it out and have it full regulated. That would probably be fine. Um, let's see. What was I talking about? Omar is asking, the watch with the suede strap, is that aftermarket? No, this is the factory strap that comes on. Do you get seven different straps to choose from when you order from Visitor? So this is one of the straps. I personally picked this one because I bought this one. And uh, this is the, the strap color. And I normally wouldn't go with a strap color like this. But I just felt like this was a perfect match for the white dial and how I wanted to wear it. All right, let me back up here. Because I got a super chat in here too. I'll focus on that real quick. John Page, 499 super chat. Thank you very much. He says, I love my Oris Aquas, but that titanium Aquas is really cool. I agree. Um, and yeah, you know what? I don't think they changed much. I, I'm assuming they made that 400 so they could drop it in. And maybe it has a different surround or something like that. But uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, that, that Oris Aquas with that green. Yeah, the, the green Oris Aquas is really sweet. Um, let's see. 
Seiko Sturgeon far left. Um, this is the Seiko SBBN Tuna, the 031. So, and it's brand new. Actually, I'm sending this over to Bruce. I meant to do it earlier, but I've been kind of not feeling great. So, um, I do have a brand new Crystal Times Sapphire Crystal. So, these are being sent over to my buddy Bruce Williams and his watch guy out there in Salt Lake City, Utah area is going to do the, the crystal install and confirm water resistance and all that stuff. And then this watch is actually being given away to one of my founders now that we're, we're going to be at 100. We're not at 100 yet, but we're really close. Oh, is the, the Seiko Sturgeon has those same hands. I didn't know that. Knife Watch says, uh, Rob, how do you feel about the Dress KX? Is there a color combo you like to see come out in that model specifically? 40 millimeter drilled lugs, polished or brushed bezel. Uh, honestly, um, I don't even look at the Seikos anymore. Like, I, I could see why people would like that watch, and I get it. That's a good design and everything like that, but I am not drawn to it at all. Uh, let's see, driver fish. Christopher Ward, C60 Pro Titanium. Now that would be very nice. Ah, I'm 100% on board with that. They did a titanium model like this, but it was um, like a COSC, it was a limited. Like I tried to get one, but they were already sold out. I would love to see Christopher Ward do a, a refresh on this and do a titanium one. I would pick it up in a heartbeat. Um, it doesn't even have to be COSC, so. Oh, is that, it looks like Richard is here from Saltzman's. That's cool. Hey, thanks for the uh, hookup on the uh, Brightline, if that's, if that's uh, Mr. Richard from Saltzman's. Yeah, take my money now, 100%. If they do it in the titanium but keep the cost down and just do the regular Salita in there, they don't have to do the COSC, I would, I would be on board with that for sure. Yeah, so Richard's username from Saltzman is apparently Alpine Dreams C4S. Okay. There is a watch I picked up from Richard. So that is awesome. Let's see. It says, I almost picked up the Titanium model the other day. They had a super sale for the frequent flyers. It was barely used half off. Oh, I didn't even see that one. Yeah, the Breitling is beautiful, and I had been wearing the Oris, and I'm probably going to pick one of these up. I'm still kind of thinking about it, but um, I switched over to the Breitling earlier to make the video, and now the Breitling's on the wrist. Typically, when that happens, I'll end up wearing it for probably about uh, three days, so we'll see. But I might need to put this guy on, because this one's on loan as well. From Oris, and this is a very cool watch. Very cool indeed. I'll tell you what. I don't know if this has been done, but maybe I should make the video on this before I send it off. But these two, maybe? I know the Oris is going to present a little bit larger than the Tudor as far as the dial, but the case size is nearly identical. So, potential option over the Tudor Black Bay 41, maybe? I don't know. Uh, driver fish, yes. I have had the Aura 65 on the channel before, yes. CFZ is checking in. Bobby Legs is here. Uh, let's see, what did you say? Hi, Rob, how's it going? Um, I'm not feeling that great, but I'm, I'm happy to be here. Oh, I have another Aura in here too, actually throw this out here it's got the tag and stuff on it still this is a november edition slicey dicey says ball should give me a deal since it's my last name that's how it works right well they also use my rr on a bunch of their items too so they should give me a deal too because of the uh, random rob I don't think, I think they're, they're going for a railroad, but. Young XLNC says, more tequila, Rob, that cures all. No, no, not, not for, not for how I'm feeling. I don't think so. 
Let's see. Crystal Orison, and the Crystal Forward Super Compressor. Yeah, I would have, but I, I sold the Super Compressor and already shipped it, so I can't even do that now. Uh, let's see. Mark SP, what do you think about Doxa watches? I think they're cool watches. They have a lot of cool... I, I think this 300T is probably my favorite. 300T or 1200T is probably my favorite ones, but... Um, yeah. Other than that, like, I don't own a Doxa. I've owned a few in the past. Uh, let's see. Breitling versus Omega. Which one looks sick? I would say both. I would say both. I would be hard-pressed to pick between these two. That's, uh, that's not a choice I want to make, quite frankly. I think I'm in the boat right now where... If I am going to have one, then I'm going to have the other. So the only way I think one of these is going to go is if both of them go. And I don't think either one's going to go. So they they both stand alone on their own merit. I think they're both probably some of the best value in their category, in their price point. Plus, I mean, the Omega, obviously, right? But the Breitling kind of um I'm just a Breitling guy like they're an independent brand still I know they're owned by a big conglomerate but they're still kind of an independent brand brand meaning that they're not with the Swatch Group or Reachmon or any of the other ones right the logo is cool the history of the brand is cool this actual watch is really cool the materials they used um in the uh, COSC ETA 2A24 caliber 17 they call it so yeah, so, and then there's, like what John just said, Buckmaster, right? Uh, he says he loves the Omega, could really take or leave the Breitling. And that is, honestly, this one is going to be way more divisive. Um, I mean, if you were to get the black dial or the blue dial, then it's a little more accepted. But, whereas the Omega is pretty much going to be universally accepted. So, I don't, I kind of go towards watches that are, not universally accepted. Todd asks, does that Breitling have a no-date version? No, they don't. And that would be cool. I know, a lot, and I even said that when I did the video. So could you imagine a no-date here and then a massive three? That would be kind of cool if they offered it either way. I like it this way, but if they offered a no-date and a date, I would have probably picked the no date just because to have the large 12369 would have been just killer. So, but I'm not mad that they did it this way. Uh, let's see, Casper's asking, Rob, have you already given thoughts on the Breitling versus your old Colt? I didn't, and I actually didn't even talk about that in the video when I made this, but you bring up a good point. The Colt was really good, and I think if you have... This watch wears kind of small, I feel, even at being a 42. But if your wrist is smaller yet, like say you have like a six and three quarter wrist or something like that, then the Colt 100% is going to work better for you because it wears even smaller yet than this. I think it's only a 41 millimeter watch anyway, but then the lug to lug is shorter on it. And it has like this similar bracelet and everything. Actually, I might even have this exact bracelet because it doesn't, this bracelet fits this case better than the Colt. If you look closely on the Colt, look, look back in my old video, the bracelet doesn't really match the case as good as it does in this here. So I think they kind of took the Colt and just took the standard bracelet and just threw it on there. Um, Ivan is asking, how come the highest quality video is at 720? Because it's a live stream and you got to think about what's happening. So just kind of is what it is. Uh, Kevin says, the Colt is a great entry level. Breitling really like the cream color dialed. Yeah, I agree. And they're they're regulated. I mean, it's... It's not like you're compromising that much. Quite frankly, you might enter into the thing where like the diminishing returns, the, the amount of money you have to spend extra to get this guy is, you know, is the value there versus the Colt. So if the Colt works, then I would say just get that. Especially like, like me, I like dive watches with the metal bezel. Well, the Colt has that and uh, most other divers don't. Breitling's like one of the only ones that really does that, so. Uh, 
Let's see. Let's see. Ever worn a Hydro Conquest? Thoughts? Um, I don't think so. I can't remember. Yeah, Kevin S. Yeah. So it's it's nice to see Breitling do more and more brushed finishing on their watches. That is uh, definitely fits my lifestyle a little bit better. Even though I like the polish stuff, you know, like the Omega has bits of polish and certainly the Oris does. So, but the bracelet, uh, more, more brushing is better. Bobby Leg says he likes the Visitor. I do too, man. And I can probably send you this one. Um, I just need to wear it a little bit more first. I could probably send it. And actually, Phil, the owner of Visitor, sent me that black dial one. I should just see if maybe I can send you that one. Because that's already a loner. Maybe he'd be cool with me sending that over to you. I'll check with him. I'll check with him, Robert, and then we'll find out. If not, like I said, worst case scenario, I could just send you the white dial one. But like I said, I need to wear it a little bit because I, I haven't even really worn it, but like once I just picked it up. <laughs> Nefarian says, Visitor is the perfect name for a watch you flip. Yeah, just visiting into the collection and then it's out of here. No, I'm going to keep that one. Um, let's see, Kevin says get the VPO bracelet for the visitor. I was looking at different bracelets for it, and even the the one that uh, visitor offers. Uh, that's the one you're talking about the the veil officer one or something like that. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know if I like it on bracelet or not. It just begs to be on the leather strap. So, but come summertime, that's when it's going to want to be on the, um, on some sort of bracelet or something like that. Yeah, Vail Park Officer, thank you. But I think, you know, it's winter time, you know, and then we'll be into spring and stuff like that. I, I think this is going to end up being on a leather strap. I might look at some other strap options. So, just a, I mean, the curves and everything on this watch are just, and the finishing on it is so good. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. So, uh, what? Hey, what's your experience with Omega accuracy? So the the accuracy on my Omega is actually really good. I can't remember. I didn't check it recently, but I do remember putting it on the time grapher, and I remember the amplitude going like down and then up, and then down and then up. But but the timekeeping on it was fine. It, it held time fine. So I don't I don't know what that's all about. John is asking, what was your favorite micro brand this year? Uh, you mean 2020? It's still early in 2021. Uh, let's see, Weeby. Does the Oris compare equally to the Tudor? Um, does the does the Oris? So, like, if you were to compare these two, um, I, I think they're both really nice watches. But you got to remember the Tudor is just a, a more prestigious brand because of its relation to Rolex. So you're going to be biased on that no matter what. And I know neither one of these are running, but just deal with it. Oh, there they go. It didn't take much. Um, the Snowflake hands are iconic. So there's going to be an automatic bias towards the Tudor as far as being like more preferred. But the Oris is no slouch either. Um, but if I could afford the Tudor, I would just buy the Tudor. I think it would come down to that. But I would like to see this model on bracelet. Yeah, I don't know. The Tudor watches are pretty awesome. I still might pick up a black dial variant of that one. Uh, let's see. Kevin says, much better movement in the Tudor, even though they use a modified ETA. I would take the ETA over a Salita any day. And I'm not saying the Salita's bad. I would just, I would take ETA over the Salita. Ivan says, question for you. I'm looking on looking at spending a little over $1,000 on a watch. I really want the Seiko SPB143, but I am very worried to get a misaligned bezel on a $1,000 watch. Am I thinking too much about this? No, no, you're not. $1,000 is a lot of money. And I'm sure... $1,000 is a lot of money to you as well, right? 
you have a legitimate concern when buying a Seiko, whether it's a SKX for a couple hundred bucks or a thousand dollar Seiko. It sucks that we have to be worried about a misaligned bezel, but that is the reality. That is what we're looking at, right? So unless you can actually touch it, I mean, if you're dead set on the Seiko, then before you spend that money, I would want proof that everything lines up. I'd want pictures or video of someone using it or locking it into position, not half clicking it and making sure things line up if you're that worried about it. Or have the ability to return it at the seller's expense um, to have it repaired or something. So, yeah, you got to be careful with that stuff for sure. Yeah, there's a ton of other watches out there for $1,000 that you could get that you could buy that you're most likely not going to have any quality control issues with. Um, Ivan says it, it's either the SPB 143 or the Stova 40 millimeter. I, I don't know what your buying and selling looks like, Ivan, uh, but between those two, and I'm, I'm just biased right now, I'm just, I don't want to say I'm anti Seiko, but I would buy the Stova. And I don't even know what that one even looks like. I don't think that even compares with it. It's not a diver. But um, if I'm looking at buying a diver for about, around $1,000, I'm buying the Christopher Ward all day long. Plus you have, uh, well, you can get this, the C60, or you can get the C65. I think those are actually a little bit more. But the C60 is the, the best deal. You can get a 38, 40, or 42. So depending on your wrist size, you should be able to find something that fits. Driver Fish says, I was, I was after the Tudor Black Bay Diver, went into a Tudor AD and compared my Christopher Ward C CW60 Pro to a Tudor Black Bay Diver, came out of the AD knowing that the Tudor was in no way quality-wise uh, from the Christopher Ward. Yeah, I mean, they... Christopher Ward definitely competes at a higher plane than what you're paying for. <laughs> Christian says, I hate to say the only, quote, Seiko I want right now is the Islander Diver. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Hey, Casper, thanks for uh, tuning in tonight. I appreciate it. I'll see you soon. Uh, when will you be able to review the Citizen Bullhead sent by Jeffrey McMahon? Carlos, um, I haven't received the watch yet. So hopefully it shows up in the next couple of days. As soon as it shows up, I'll do an unboxing, which I'm, I'm starting to compile like a, a bank of videos again too. So there's going to be a delay from the time I get a watch till you see the unboxing and then certainly till you see the video. So as soon as it arrives, I will do the unboxing. We'll do a first impressions unboxing and then I'll do the video shortly after. There's a slight chance that I might even buy that watch because it's titanium and I love the titanium. Uh, Dan Dora, I saw your video on the orange SKX. That's the SKX 011. I liked the green strap you put on it, so I purchased one. Thanks. Hey, you're welcome. That watch, I think, is headed back to me. I don't know if Jack has shipped it yet, but that watch should be coming back to me soon. If he, ha if he hasn't shipped it, I'm trying to intercept it and have him ship it to Craig because Craig wants to check out the Namoki's titanium case. He's saying his Islander feels like it's top heavy. So he's curious to see if the titanium case will at all match up color-wise to a different bracelet. I don't think it will. I think the titanium has some nice polished and brushed. This one's not. This is stainless steel. But I think you'd have to find some other bracelet. Nobody really makes any good aftermarket titanium. Well, I might be wrong on that. I have found um, I have found some titanium bracelets, but I need to maybe buy one and check it out. Yeah, Nefarian actually confirms even his 38 millimeter is a little top heavy. So Jordan says, where is the Borealis? Um, I don't know. Behind you talking about the new one? Let me go grab it. I can grab the new one. So I have a couple of Borealis. So I have the new one here. This is the new diver. 
And check this one out. I have the old, this is one of their earlier releases. Um, I forget what this one's called. What is this? The Scorpion Fish. This is the Corp Scorpion Fish version 2. I, I should talk to Carlos. He could actually redo this one. This one's actually, I mean, it's beastly. It's kind of primitive looking, but it's such a beast tank of a watch. It's so cool. I'm digging it. Very retro-ish. So this is the new diver from Borealis. I still need to do the video on this one as well. And yeah, it should be a completely loomed dial on this one, but it, it's, I don't remember it being super bright. I don't think it's crazy bright though, for some reason. I mean, it's bright enough, but it's not like flashlight bright. It's not like insane or anything. But it does the trick. It's good. All right, what did I miss here? John is asking, how do I like the scorpion fish? Uh, listen, when I first opened it up and I looked at it, I'm like, that thing is crude as hell. But the more I started funneling it and checking it out, uh, there's, there's a certain level of charm to it. It's so just its own thing. It is very masculine, like chunky. And the bezel action is awesome. And it's the butterfly clasp is the manliest butterfly clasp I've ever seen. It is such a beast. So it has three micro adjust and look how thick it is. And it's so like tactile. It's very cool. Yeah, the case is like pretty flat. I mean, it might have a little bit of bow to it, but not much. It's pretty flat. Let me see if it's, let me see if it fits my wrist. Hold on a second. I don't even think I've tried it on yet. Uh, CFC is asking if I've seen the Smith Explorer. I don't think I've had one on the show, no. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it fits my wrist. Yeah, that is... I'm knocking over watches. That is a tank of a... It has got some heft to it, and the bracelet tapers a little bit, too. That thing is a beast on wrist. Very, very tough feeling. Uh, let's see. Do those torches you use have UV, and if so, does it damage the loom? I don't know. They're Yeah, they're UV. I don't know if they damage the loom or not. I don't think so. I've never heard that. Yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, that watch, that could wreck somebody. Let's see. Oh, Blue Ram says the Carl F. Booker, Booker diver clasp or like that? Okay. So there's some, probably some uh, throwbacks to it. Yep, yeah, 70s retro for sure. What's the lug on that? Uh, David, are you talking about this one or are you talking about the new one? I guess I could just measure them both real quick. The lug to lug on this is pretty long. So 49, but that bracelet does not move. It's, <laughs> it's, it is like 56 it's out there it's gonna hang off the end of your wrist a little bit um this one is only 47 uh let's see did i get in on the kickstarter for the yama gmt bronze uh no i don't i don't see myself doing any kickstarters just just i don't i know that I don't have a problem with it. Like, it, if you want to do a Kickstarter, that's totally fine. I don't have a problem with it at all. And and I do support Kickstarter watches often. I'll have them on the channel all the time, right? But I don't buy them. But I don't buy a lot of watches, guys. The, think about all the watches I show. When I'm showing a watch every day on the channel, there's no way I could buy that. There's hardly any people out there that are actually going to be in the YouTube community, especially, that are going to be buying every single watch. So you guys see what I buy, and it goes up and down. So, Cowboy Swami with a super chat, four ninety nine. Thank you very much. He says, "Excellent channel, Random Rob. Are you gonna keep the Sapphire Tuna?" I would lean towards no. So, and hear me out, because I think this is hands down the best three hundred meter Seiko Tuna ever made. A hundred percent love this. If I were going to keep 
any new Seikos that were coming out, this would be the one I would keep. But I also know that I'm not going to wear it because I already don't wear my Orange Monster very much. I need to wear the Omega more. I need to wear the Breitling more. Like, I'm trying to, like, be realistic about what I have right now on hand and how little I wear some of the watches. So I need to probably flip them. Do I want to flip this one? No, I really do want to keep this one. Because even when I sell it, I paid $14.50. Even when I go to sell it, I'll be lucky if I get $12.50 for it. So, and uh, I think Homer's interested in it potentially. And if Homer's going to buy it, I'm actually going to cut him even a bigger deal on it. So, and he's never tried a tuna, so I kind of want him to try it. I think it would work good for him. But we'll see. We'll see. I think I've already done the video on it, so. Oh, I know what I got to do. I have to send this off to Bruce. So I'm going to send both tunas out to Bruce because I'm curious to see what he does for a video. Um, plus that, that one over there is going to get the sapphire crystal in, so... Um, let's see here. Okay, Robert M. says, The UV accelerates aging of the loom, but a quick UV blast would have uh, little to no effect. So, and that's all I do. And I, I typically don't even, I don't do this on the regular anyway. So, I, and if I do, it's just a little cheat mode, just a quick blast. So, Beanboy89 says, Thoughts on the fourth generation Seiko Monster? Well, if you follow my channel, you'll know that I actually have one. Well, I don't have it here. Um, my buddy Mimo, Mimo's Jewelry, has it right now. So I bought the Zimbi model, which has the gold case and everything. It has uh, actually even come with a two-tone bracelet, but I would pretty much wear it on the strap, the silicone strap. Well, the crown, the quality control was so bad on that one, they didn't size the crown and stem properly. So I sent it over to Mimo. He actually, I think, we'll see if it actually happens, but I think he found a good source for the um, a new crown and stem assembly because you couldn't he couldn't take it apart and fix it. So hopefully I'll get that one back at some point. And then I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not. I don't know what the prices are doing on the Zimbi Monster. I haven't looked, so I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it or not. I suspect I'm going to sell it, but I wanted to make sure that it was good. I wanted to make sure it was fully repaired. If it's not good, it doesn't get fully repaired, then I'm not going to sell it. It needs to be 100% good to go. Uh, Steve says, have you ever had the Tudor Black Bay GMT on the, the channel? I'm wanting one kind of bad. No, I have not. I've never actually handled one. Somebody else asked about what was the flaw. Well, so you can't see it. Like I'm looking at it I know the quality of the video is not going to be that great, but I am looking at it right now in the naked eye, and I know what I'm looking for, and I can't see it. I have to put my reader glasses on, so I put these on, which are, uh, let's see, these are plus three power. So if I do uh, plus three power reading glasses, I can see on this indice right there, the circle, the applied circle or whatever it is, there's like a dimple in it. That's all it is. Other than that, I seriously, I didn't find any other flaws with it. This was probably the best, and maybe I should just keep it. I don't know. But I, but I can't just keep every watch either, guys. Uh, let's see. Shark mesh band on that tuna is perfect. Uh, shark mesh would work on that. I personally like the... Um, Hex head, the that bracelet is the one I like because it's kind of chunky looking for it and it tapers. So I would probably order that bracelet and I would probably wear it. And maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that. Scott says, uh, is asking, update on the Tudor Black Bay 41 that I bought that I returned back to Crown and Caliber. So I just got emailed today that they received the watch. So they sent me the, and I didn't, I should have videoed this process, I guess, but they sent me an email with a FedEx quick ship label on it and detailed instructions on what to do. So I had to package everything back up uh, and, and they wanted me to double box it. So I put the watch in the, in the Tudor box and even the little crown and caliber thing. I don't know if they wanted that back or not. 
and not, now I never removed CFZ. There should be no restocking fees because I never removed the red thing. All I did, you guys saw exactly what I did. I did the live unboxing with it and then I returned it. I never wore it. I never sized it. I never messed with it. Nothing. So it was, I opened it. I was like, this thing's a pile of crap. And I closed it and I returned it. That's all I did. So if they try to give me a restock fee and when there's supposed to be free returns, I'm going to be really pissed. Um, so I, I boxed it in a USPS box, stuffed it really good. And then I put that box in another box. They wanted me to double box it. So there was, so it's double boxed and packaged really good. So there shouldn't be, I should get a full refund. I'll let you know. And, and if I don't, then it needs to be explained to me why I didn't. And if it's a valid reason why I don't, then I'll, I will, I'll, I'll share all of that with you guys. Let's see. Good to know. Floridian says, only one you will keep is Orange Monster. You will eventually flip everything else sooner or later. I don't know. I'm kind of losing... I think I'm kind of losing the will to do the flipping like I was. Um, and... You know, I, I should bear some fruits of my labor for this channel, I think, right? So I'm it, I'm earning, you know, the Google AdSense, I'm earning, you know, some people have given me super chats, that's all helpful. You know, I have, um, what do you call it, uh, my founder and co-founder group, there's income there. Now, obviously, a lot of that offsets, like, the taxes I have to pay on the earning and it offsets uh, some of my operating expenses. I go through a lot of packing material, a lot of tape, printers, all of that stuff. But I also need to enjoy the fruits of my labor, right? So that's me buying this the Seamaster and keeping it. I don't owe anything on it. And I can't think of anything that I would sell that for to replace it with. So why bother? Uh, let's see. Simucom reviews. I'm interested to see how tax season will be affected by my YouTube income this year. It will be the first time to... Hey, um, email me or hit me up on Instagram. We can talk more about that because I've already done a few years under my belt with that. So Simucom reviews. Hit me up if you want some advice on that because I think I could probably help you maybe if you're not used to it. But um, definitely hit me up on Instagram. It's usually quicker, but you could email me as well. So uh, you definitely need to, I don't want to say like create write-offs, but there is things that you're doing that you're not thinking about that are, um, that you have, that you should be, it should reduce your uh, income, right? So you should come close, at least for the first couple of years, because the income really isn't that good. You should be still losing money technically so you won't pay taxes on that until you grow to a certain level then you'll have to uh you have to pay your fair share let's see i know i missed a lot of comments guys i'm sorry uh, uh john says keep your stock skx009 negative income floridian that's how we roll man negative income no i'm i'm sure i'm gonna have to pay taxes this year uh, so this guy here is going to remain bone stock, 100%. So my good friend Michael from Desire68 Frogman channel gifted me this watch a while ago. And uh, this watch means a lot to me because his, fr his friendship means a lot to me. So um, every time I, you know, mess around with that watch, I think of Michael. He's, he's an awesome guy. Uh, let's see. John says he put a shark mesh on his SKX. I... So, man, I don't know if I've tried to... I would do a mesh on that, but the problem with most, most mesh bracelets, I'm going to stumble here, don't taper. I know Stabe does. There might be some other ones. Maybe Strap Coat actually does now, too. Um, and I like a taper, when, especially when you go to a 22-millimeter bracelet. You need a taper. Uh, flipping is a 5013. See, No. No, but, and you know, I don't keep track when it comes to the taxes and the channel and everything like that. I don't keep track of the watches I buy and sell. I don't, I didn't want to bring that mess into the equation. So I probably could though. 
Uh, Mad John says he thought all my watches were Rolex. They are. These are all Rolex. Yeah, I'll look at the strap code. I still haven't checked out the, the tapering shark mesh from them. I should check that out again eventually. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, I won't even put a sapphire in that. Heck, I haven't even put a sapphire in the orange monster, and this has a scratched uh, hard lex on it. You know, uh, Craig, before he sold this to me, he did have a sapphire, double dome sapphire with clear AR installed in this one, and it does look great. I 100% admit that. The sapphire looks amazing on that. So, but uh, I don't ever intend on doing that. I think the only way that would happen is if I couldn't, if something happened to this crystal and I couldn't get a replacement for it and I could get a sapphire, then I would. But that would be like the only way I would actually do it. Let's see. Is it more costly to run the channel once you started buying more expensive watches? No, because I don't factor that into it. So... Um, my expenses are like the internet, the computer, the phone, the microphones, the stands, um, any sort of shipping, all of that. Those are my expenses. I don't count the watch purchases. The watch purchases are happening by me, right? Not, not Random Rob, the uh, YouTube channel guy. The watch purchases, when I buy a watch, it's for me, for Rob. It has nothing to do with Random Rob. I just happen to share that with you. So I don't write them off and I don't mess with them. So I didn't, you know what? I didn't keep the receipt on this. I should have because it was, um, I think it was like 15 bucks or something. I don't know. And that's, so that's the little things, right? That's the little things that you could write off that you don't. And even the mugs. Um, I don't know if I, I'll have to look at my receipts. I'm sure I bought mugs in 2020. So, but I was giving those away. So I bought well over 100, probably 150 mugs. And I never sold a mug. I gave the mugs away. So those were all complete write-off. Let's see. Rock the Watch is looking at the Grand Seiko Snowflake. It was only a matter of time, right? Lamp just shuts off. Yeah, it's, on, it's just on a timer. It's I'd have to rewire it or something to have it all the way on. Nefarian says, if I turn the camera around, I could expense suits, shirts, and everything. Oh, yeah, I could probably expense off the razors and everything, too, for shaving, right? Uh, Cowboy Swami says, is there still room for the founders? I would like to join if it's cool. I, I'll have to check. I know I'm at, like, 97 or 98. I don't know if, the, if there's room or not. So uh, there's definitely room in the co-founders, and, and we can talk about that soon. So if you're interested in maybe getting in, and we'll see. But I think I'm close to maxed out on the founders. Oh, Jordan, yes. Jordan says, why am I just seeing this white dial Skurfa coming out later this year? I talked about that watch uh, probably like six months ago. They've been working on that one for a while, and it looks great. And hopefully I can get one on the channel. I'm not going to buy one, but... It looks nice. I like the case design on it. It's going to be a white dial, automatic, because usually the Scurfa watches are uh, quartz, which those are good too, but this new automatic diver looks really good. So if you guys don't know about it, go visit the Scurfa.com or whatever it is and check it out because it does look good. Um, Marco says, has the Seamaster 300 got a taper bracelet? No, it does not. Uh, Ralph is asking if I've seen the new Borealis uh, Nocturnal. Yes, I have. I have one right here. I just haven't done the video of it yet. Nefarian says he's never even heard of Skurfa. Check them out, man. You might like them. The Skurfa, even the quartz models, they look really good. But that that new auto looks like it's going to be a good a good uh, seller. Oh. Uh. Driver Fish, I know exactly what you're talking about. So check this out. He's, Driver Fish says, Seiko quality. I bought a SPB051, doesn't matter. Insert whatever Seiko part number. Put it on the time grapher, and I was. it was like looking at a snowstorm. Set it back, second one came, and this time the crown didn't screw in correctly. Not waterproofed. 
So what he's referring to, like on the time grapher, occasionally, so this is unfortunately the way it works with most Seiko movements for me on my time grapher. Occasionally I'll put it on and it'll actually read, right, a solid line where I can actually get whatever, I don't care, plus, minus, or straight across. It'll just read. But at least 50% of the time I'll put it on the time grapher and there's just specs everywhere and it, it has a hard time even reading what the beat is and it should be beating at 21,600. Um, but it, it can't, it might pick up the amplitude, but it can't pick up like what the plus minus is on the time. So I do have some tips for that. If you get a good full wind on it, instead of putting it the, on your time grapher, instead of putting the watch like this on the microphone, just for kicks, flip the watch around and put it dial down just for kicks. Try it. It might be able to read it through the crystal more so than the case back. I don't know. I've done it a couple of times and I've gotten some readings. But yeah, I know what you're talking about, that snow globe thing. It's ridiculous. Yeah, Kevin, and I've, and I've shown that before too because um, I've done some timing when I, back when I was doing the Sunday sales and I was timing everything. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Um, so the Seikos sometimes don't put it on the time graph or just give it a good wind, get it going, maybe wear it around for a little bit and just set the time and then check it. And I bet you anything, it's probably running just fine. Maybe don't put it on the time grapher. Uh, let's see. RBR Burby is asking, how do I get a second gen orange monster? Well, before I end the live stream, I will tell you this. This guy right here, I'm going to give away. So you could potentially get this actual orange monster, SRP309, in basically like new condition with a double dome sapphire crystal, AR coated, clear. I will be giving this watch away to one of my subscribers when I hit 50,000 subscribers. I will do the giveaway on this watch. So as we get closer to the 50,000 subscriber mark, then I will figure out a way that we're gonna do the giveaway, but there is a chance that you could win one for free. And I know something in this condition right here is probably gonna be trending at I don't know, eight hundred to a thousand dollar mark. I don't know where they're at right now, but I know they're they're creeping up there. Well, no, I'm giving away that orange monster. I'm not giving away this one. I'm giving away this one. Mine, I'm keeping. This one, I'm going to give away when I hit fifty thousand. Assuming I do, maybe I won't. <laughs> it seems like it's very slow growth, and I don't want to grow artificially. So I'm not really like I'll talk to you guys about it in the live stream, but I'm not going to like start blasting on every video. Hey, subscribe to me, and and then you could win that. Like I don't want to grow the channel that way. You know what I mean? I want the channel to grow like just naturally. All right. Well, we're over an hour, so I'm going to kill the lights. We're going to look at some loom, and then I'm going to kill the stream. Unless you guys have any last-minute questions. Uh, let's see. Brent says, I will hit 50,000. I hope so. I think I will, too. David is here. Just got home from work. Just checking in. I'm about ready to kill the live stream. I'm just waiting. If anybody has a last minute question, maybe I'll do one more. Chaz from the Berg, you're late. You can always rewatch it, but Chaz, you can always just hit me up on Discord too. So Floridian's checking out. Robert M says, thanks for your work, Random Rob. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in, Robert. Let's see the loom. John wants to see the loom. Let's kill it. We got some good ones in there. Look at the Christopher Ward with the bezel and everything. Of course, the monsters, you got the tunas in the background. Even the Brightling is good. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next vid.